Howdy, howdy, howdy from Texas. Mark Crawford again from Sustainable Frugal Living. And what we're doing today, making some raised beds out of uh, pallets. Um, and the first order of business is to cut them in half. Basically, the raised beds are going to be 24 inches. That's why I look for uh, four-foot pallets, where they're all consistent, all the same. All these pallets were free, and that's something I would encourage. If you're trying to save money, as we always say, we're always trying to be frugal. Look in on Craig, Craigslist or other sources. Heck, you can just drive down the road and look for pallets by dumpsters. And um, most of the time, people are just you know, trying to get them, get rid of them. Um, I found these at an elementary school, whereas there was a contractor that was doing some work, and the materials he was getting were on uh, the same materials in bulk, and he was getting them on these pallets, so they were all the same size. And these are good pallets. Most of them are, are brand new, if not brand new. And they're in real good shape. They've got good thick boards. Uh, some of them you'll find these boards here are, are not that thick. You don't want to use those. And some of them are just, they're just too torn up. Boards are, are busted. There's not very many boards on them and things of that nature. But this is what you want to find right here. This is a good, this is a good example of a good pallet uh, used for a raised beds. Um, this wood obviously won't last forever. But what we're going to do is line the inside with fabric with the landscape fabric and uh, that'll keep the dirt from going through these gaps here. And it'll also uh, semi-preserve the wood as well. It allows uh, the raised bed to get some air as well. You can probably hear some noise back there. That's our chickens. <laughs> anyway, that's our chickens back there. Uh, you've probably seen in some other videos. We like to keep them in until about noon, 11 o'clock, noonish. Give them a chance to lay some eggs and be productive. <laughs> and then we let them out in free range every day. Um, anyway, I wanted to um, go over what I'm using to cut these. Some people said I don't go into enough detail on the videos. And so I'm going to go into a little bit more detail on this one. If, if, you, if you're confident you know how to cut a pallet in half with a circular saw, <laughs> go ahead and skip forward a little bit in the video. But basically, all I'm using is a is a board to draw a straight line. We got a um, carpenter's pencil, of course, a circular saw, and safety glasses. Always wear one. Always want to wear safety glasses. Now, um, when I first came out, I noticed the circular saw had the wrong blade on it, so I had to switch it out. And I'm going to go ahead and show you how I did that, so folks that maybe have never done that before. Hey, here's a, here's a little leg up. So follow me over to the shop. Okay, everybody, we're in the shop here, and uh, I wanted to show you the blade that was on it. As you can see, it's a fine tooth blade. And there's more teeth per inch, and this is the kind of blade that you would use for um, framing, like if you're framing a house, or especially if you're doing uh, any kind of more detailed work, like you know, doing some rough cabinetry work or, you know, different things that you need a little bit finer cut. For what we're doing with the pallets, <laughs> you don't need a fine cut. You just need to get it done quick. So this right here, as you can see, let me get the other one up here. As you can see the comparison, big difference, big difference. This is your get it done quick blade right here. And if, for those of you that never actually switched out a blade, um, first you need to find a socket that fits the nut in the center, like this. And what I do is just take a screwdriver and stick it right in here. And then um, once you start putting some pressure on it, it comes up and it, you see how it stops right there. And then you can just loosen it. Like this, take the nut out or the bolt, just like that. And you've got this little retainer ring here. You want to get a, a, a glove or a, a rag or something because this blade is hot. If you've been cutting, you want to be careful about that. 
grab that blade and push it towards you a little bit and then pull it out and try not to drop the try not to drop the retainer in like I just did and that's how it comes off okay and then obviously when you put the when you put the new one back on this one's actually cool now when you put the new one back on it, it should be cool you slide it right in like that and there's a little groove this, this has two flat sides and you just turn this until they until it goes in just like that put your bolt back in and since I'm on a wood top here I'll go ahead and tighten it up against this wood top and then put my screwdriver in again to keep the blade still do a final tightening on it get it tight that's it you're good hey everybody oh, we're back here at the pallets we got our direct blade our get her done blade on and if you've got a, a side of the pallet where the board's flush with the the side support there the two by four usually um, that's a good place to go ahead and do your measurement from and we're going to measure over 24 inches and uh, make a mark 24 inches and then we'll come over this side make sure we do the same thing and then at these these marks here you just made like I said, I like to take a, a straight board and just draw a line all the way across so that you can follow that line. These are just for raised beds. You don't have to have them perfect. If you're doing projects and you're trying to make everything perfect, it's going to take you twice as long or three times as long. I'm right-handed, so I typically cut, obviously, from right to left. You want to keep your extension cord on the right side here, that way it pulls across. You never want to cut into where your extension cord is at because you might cut into your extension cord if you're not watching, if you're not careful. So let's go ahead and cut across here. What's your cord? Sometimes you got to pull this up to get it started. Typical circular saw is only going to cut about halfway. Um, then what I do is I come up here for the rest of it and I scribe a line from that cut to the top so I know where it's at. Do the same thing on the other side. This one doesn't have a board in the middle, but I think you get the idea. Again, watch your cord. Stay tuned. This uh, part of the video is just on uh, cutting the pallets in half. We'll have another video from here on how I'm putting it together with deck screws. It'll basically be a four foot by four foot square, 24 inches high, and that allows you with fabric in the middle. And like I say, the next video will cover that. Get into that. Well, I want to thank you for watching the video. Appreciate you supporting our channel. If 
Be sure to subscribe by hitting the button down below. And I think there's a notification button as well, like a little bell or something right beside it. Click that. And if you like the video, if it was helpful to you at all, hit the thumbs up. Appreciate it. Be sure it with your friends and relatives. Maybe it'll help somebody. That's all, what we're all about. We're not experts by any degree. We're just learning as we go. But uh, we're all about sustainable, frugal living, projects like this, how to build raised beds for the least amount of money, but still have a good quality bed. Uh, like I said, these pallets were free. The fabric is $28, I think, for a four foot by a hundred foot roll. So that's economical and uh, needed. The fabric, help, like I said, the fabric helps your raised bed to breathe, and it also helps to keep the dirt in from the, from the gaps. Um, anyway, until next time, God bless.